thanks for dropping in. 3D printed springs are sort of a running theme around here. These twist lock boxes stay shut with the help of a torsion spring. The satisfying click of a toggly fidget button comes from its flat leaf spring. And this wall mounted cat toy wouldn't be much fun without its spiral spring. Here's my latest springy design. It's not quite a compression spring or a tension spring, but it's really good at wobbling. And that's perfect for this week's project, a 3D printed bobblehead. This restless friend comes with a wide base that can magnetically attach to your 3D printer. Now you can have hours of G-code powered wobbling. You might have recognized the face on this bobblehead. It comes from the emoji version of the toggly fidget button. And yes, I also brought the rest of the gang. Angry, calm, confused, grin, happy, love, neutral, sad, silly, tired, wink, and worried. But why limit ourselves to just a few silly emoji? No offense meant. Bobbleheads can be almost anything. So I spent a few hours in Fusion 360 and turned this blank bobblehead into R2-D2. While the Sasermec droid can't lock down a loose hot end, it can look quite good while watching over it. If 3D modeling isn't your thing, many existing models can be turned into bobbleheads using Prusa Slicer. Let's try that out using this model by Chris Kruger, aka the new hobbyist. It's a scan of a ceramic bust of Abraham Lincoln, originally sculpted by Tibor Pirani. First, I'll open the model in Prusa Slicer. I only need Abe's head for this bobble, so I'll rotate him back a little and then use the cut tool to remove the bottom half of the bust. Next, I'll add a hole for the spring. Normally I do this by right clicking on the model, selecting add negative volume, and then choosing cylinder. This cylinder, once sized and positioned, acts as a punch right through the model. But the hole we're looking for needs to be a very specific size and shape. A basic cylinder won't do. Fortunately, we're not limited to just cylinders and basic shapes when punching holes. Prusa Slicer lets you use any model as a cutting tool for any other model. That's where this model comes in. This represents the exact size and shape of the hole we need, right down to a small square peg at the top for the spring to lock into. But we'll get to that later. So instead of selecting cylinder, I'll click load, and then open this model, which I've called negative volume. If you plan to make lots of bobbleheads, you can even import this model into a shape gallery for easy access in the future. Now that the negative volume is loaded, we have a new problem. This hole is way larger than the head we're trying to cut into. So I'll scale the head up by 200%. Now we can position the negative volume so it's pretty close to the center of the head. While moving this negative volume around, make sure that it sits on the base of the printer bed. This drop to bed button will help with getting that vertical positioning just right. Just keep positioning and slicing until the preview matches what you were expecting. Once that's done, you now have a new bobblehead, one that's fully compatible with this spring and base that's used by all these other designs. Speaking of the spring and base, these parts are very easy to print and don't need supports. The spring will work best if your extrusion lines are exactly 0.4 millimeters wide. With that setting, the flexible portion of your spring will consist of exactly two solid perimeter lines. As you can see here with Abe's ear, your bobblehead may have some overhangs that could use some supports. This looks pretty minor though, so I'm just gonna print it as is. Okay, we have all the parts needed for our Abe bobble, so let's assemble it. First, I'm going to add a six by three millimeter magnet into the bobblehead base. Next comes the spring. This fit is pretty tight and doesn't need glue, but I'm gonna add some anyway, just to be safe. Finally, we're going to attach the head while making sure that the spring is aligned correctly. This is the trickiest step. The spring will want to compress and wiggle as it's pushed into place, but as long as we're careful, it will eventually lock in. And there we go. For my printers, I got the best bobbling when the bobble head sat right above the printer head. Depending on your printer though, that may not be the case. Wherever you choose to position it, make sure that the bobble head is in a place where it won't get knocked over. That could easily destroy a print. For those with the Prusa MK3 printer, I also made this adapter arm. It screws in below the printer bed 
to hold the bobblehead away from all the 3D printing action. Even from the safe vantage point, the bobblehead still gets plenty of movement from the bed sliding back and forth. As a final caveat, I've been printing with this bobblehead for a few weeks now, and I haven't noticed a change to my print quality. In theory, a small weight bouncing around on the extruder could cause problems, or strangely enough, it could actually reduce print artifacts by acting as a damper, if you're extremely lucky. Either way, I wouldn't add this to a machine attempting crazy print speeds or requiring critical precision. Those concerns aside, I hope this brings some extra joy to your prints. So until next time, happy printing and thanks for stopping by.